Now in this second version of our program, we're doing something a little different. We're going to make up our own buffers. Notice we have buff and buff1. These are dimensioned to be maximum 80 characters. Again, we're going to be opening a file. This time it's going to be called data1.txt and we're opening it for writing. Instead of getting characters from the keyboard and putting them into our keyboard buffer standard in, we're going to actually load these into buff. Once it's done that, we're going to then say do while i is less than max minus 1 because their buffer is 80, so 0 to 79. And also, notice we're incrementing this by 1 after we've done our get character, so we're checking the one previous to see if it is a carriage return. So while we don't go past our buffer, and while we haven't hit an enter key, we're going to continually grab characters. Notice here, after we've done that, we're going to put a null at the end. We're going to put that string into our file. And just for good measure, we're flushing all that stuff to the file to make sure it goes. Then we're closing the file. Once we've done that, we're going to zero buff one, read all the information from the file back into buff one, and then print it out. Let's see wh what happens when we run this up. We're just going to hit F5. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say hi there, period, enter. And it says hi there. And if we take a look over here, let's just bring up data one, and we can see that indeed it says hi there. Now let's take a look at this in a little more depth. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to set a breakpoint right here. And what I'm going to do is run it one more time and say yes. And when I run it this time, I'm going to say hi there, period, enter. Now it's going to stop out at this breakpoint. Now let's take a look and see what's going on in buff. Right now buff has got all of these characters. Let's just zoom in a little bit. But one of the things that it does not have at this point is it does not have a null at this point, which is what we need. So I'm just going to go here and say step into, and there's our null. And without the null, we'll see that it does some funny stuff. So let's continue on, and we just put that in. We're just going to run it to the end and what we're going to see is exactly what we saw before and everything behaves the same. Okay, let's get rid of this breakpoint. Let's put in a comment just to comment that out and let's run it one more time and see how this is going to be a little different. So I'm going to say yes. Let me just back out again and I'm going to say hi there. And notice all of the stuff that we've got here is a kind of a little bit scrambled. We've got a whole bunch of other stuff coming in because we didn't put that null. So that's going to be an issue. Let's take a look again. Let's back out one more time and take a look at data1.txt and see if there's any extra stuff in there. And yeah, we can see there's a whole bunch of extra stuff because we didn't put that null. So that's a very important thing that you terminate the string with a null if you're going to be using your own buffer. So this is a very important thing that once you use your own buffer to put a null at the end. Also, we're seeing here that we're zeroing out buff one as we read it in. Now I'm going to comment that out and see if this has any effect as well. Let's just go from here to here and let's run it up one more time and take a look. So I say hi there enter. Notice we're getting again a lot of stuff in here and we're going to hit enter. But let's take a look at the file itself and the file itself data1.txt if we look at it doesn't have any of the extra stuff but again it is always a good idea to zero out any kind of buffer that you're going to use by putting nulls in it first so you don't get extraneous characters coming in.